So a while ago, I did a video called the three ambusher mistakes to avoid on the saxophone, which actually got a lot of views. So because you guys asked me to do a part two, here it is. This is part two of the three ambusher mistakes to avoid on the saxophone. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at three more things that can actually cause weird things in the ambusher and in the sound. And we're gonna take a look at teeth, okay, air direction, and facial muscles underworking. So check it out. Let's start with teeth first. So a very common thing that I hear from students is things like, oh my God, I keep on squeaking, how do I do it? Or my sound is really harsh, <laughs> whatever. Things like that, okay? So let's start by taking a look at your bottom teeth and how they are placed on the embouchure and on the mouthpiece. I always say that the teeth and the reed, they don't like each other so much and I'll show you why. We know that we have to put our teeth on top of the mouthpiece. So this is actually happening, right? Aha, uh -huh, like this. So this should be happening, right? Okay, cool. Now let's look at the bottom teeth and what they're doing, okay? I want you to try something. Experiment with having your top teeth on the mouthpiece and your bottom teeth down, actually biting on the reed and see what happens. Okay, so that's what happens if your teeth are touching the reed. And that's why I say that the teeth and the reed are bad enemies. They completely hate each other, okay? So that's a very extreme. Of course, we're not gonna play with our teeth on the reed because that's so stupid, okay? That's why we need to cover our teeth with a little bit of bottom lip because this is going to allow the reed to vibrate without having that, you know, annoying squeak that we have. It's more than annoying squeak that we had with the teeth, okay? When I say rolling your lip in, okay, a lot of people, I think, uh, I found that when, when, when we say that we're rolling the lip in, people think that you have to do a okay? Like that, okay? Which is obviously too much, it doesn't make sense whatsoever, okay? So when we're rolling the lip in, it's just enough for the lip to actually cover the lip, okay? But that's it, we're not gonna go all the way in because we're gonna have all this flesh, okay? Here, like that, okay? Just preventing the reef from, from vibrating properly. So we don't want that, okay? We just want enough lip to cover the teeth. And in order to get the proper amount of lip, we can think of the letter V. Okay, if you say the letter V from the alphabet, V, V, V. See how naturally the lip curls in a little bit. V, 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 v. We don't say V, V. We say V, 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 okay? And that's a, a great indication of how much bottom lip you should have, okay? So if we play and we think about the letter V, 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 V. Okay, that making sense? Okay, so teeth, okay, not too close to the reed. Actually, make sure that they don't touch the reed whatsoever and you cover your teeth with a little bit of lip by thinking about the letter V. Now let's do an exercise together in order for you to gain more control over the sound and to just get this airstream happening. So this is not really embouchure related, it's more like diaphragm and air related, but I think it's gonna be really, really good and really beneficial for you to do it anyway. So, I mean, we're talking about embouchure, but you know, at the end of the day, it's like embouchure, sound, throat, and all those things. So let's do it. So this exercise is so good because it will allow you to expand your sound and will allow you to, it will actually teach your brain to keep a better and more consistent and more steady sound, okay? than any other exercise in the world. <laughs> okay, so check it out. So I have a window here in front of me, okay? Um, you can do this facing a window. I really recommend this because it's just, it's, it just adds, adds more, okay? But if you don't have a window, let's say you're in the studio or whatever, or, um, so you can do this in the room as well. So the point is this. In the, we have a window here, okay? We're facing the window, okay? What I want you to do is I want you to pick a distant point, okay? Which can be a leaf, can be a tree, can be a bench, can be a person reading something, it doesn't really matter. But as, lo as long as it's something that is just far away from you, from where you are, okay? So I'm gonna pick a tree that is around, around there, okay, in the park, okay? And what I want you to do is I want you to blow your note all the way to that point, okay? So mentally, you're not here, mentally you are there, okay? You are 
in whatever point point you've chosen. Okay, let's do that. So, bam, like this, okay? The reason why we do this, okay, is because once your mind focuses on something which is actually far away from you, okay, it's distant, okay, what happens is magically, naturally, everything starts to activate. So your muscles down here actually do more work and support your sound so much more, okay? So if you do this, when you do your low notes, okay, even when you play just naturally, natural. I mean, even when you just play your pieces and stuff, face the window, pick something and just play to that point, okay? Mentally, you're gonna get stronger and your muscles are actually gonna be working more. So this is an amazing way to really expand your sound because if you're there and I'm here, you know, there's not a lot of um, space in between us, okay? I'm talking to the camera, but I'm, my camera is, you know, I can touch my camera here. Um, so it's like um, an arm length kind of thing, okay? So if I play to you and you're there with the camera is, my mind goes like, oh yeah, yeah, he's there, she's there. I don't have to do a lot of effort. So my muscles are just like, you know, working like 50%. 50, 50 but uh, when I concentrate on something which is really far, oh, they go like, oh my God, okay, we, are, we actually need to work and everything starts to activate and starts to, you know, that's where you're gonna feel the support that you need. Make sense? So if you do the window exercise every day, you're gonna see amazing, amazing results. Now, lastly, we're gonna take a look at the embouchure and what to do when the facial muscles are actually underworking are doing too little. Let's see. So another thing that can happen with your facial muscles is that they don't do enough work. This is less common than having too much tension. That's like the common thing that happens with, I would say, almost everyone, okay, beginner, intermediate students. Having Facial muscles under working. I've seen it. Okay. Um, it's not as common, but I've seen it. So this is what happens Essentially the muscles are a little lazy. I say so they don't do too much and if they don't do too much What happens to the reed? The reed is not actually been put in vibration properly So the sound is like it's very low in pitch. Okay, so it's, it's not actually a good sound because it's not a full sound because this the reed is not vibrating properly. So let me show you. Let's see <laughs> Can you hear? So there's a lot of air uh, and the notes are like like that, okay? Because my muscles are not doing enough, okay? So we need to add, we need to teach the the, the brain and the muscles. So we need to teach the brain to send a message to the muscles in order for everything to be working properly, okay? So how to fix it? So as you saw, it's, you know, it's, the nodes are pretty crap. <laughs> it's just horrible because these guys here are not doing enough. So the reed is not vibrating properly, okay? So what we need to do is we need to teach the brain to send a message to the muscles here and the message says just, hey guys, just you know work a little bit more so everything actually goes up and, and works, okay? But how to do it? So a while ago I did a video, uh, I think it was called the, um, um, uh, your first note in, in less than 10, 10 minutes or something like that, okay? I'm gonna link it up here, in which I talk about uh, different strategies for you to um, do in order to get the note from starting from a relaxed state into the note, okay? And I also talk about the ocean sound and I've done a few videos on that. I'm gonna also link them here. So we start with the ocean sound, which is basically doing this kind of sound. And I'm gonna link the, the video here so you can actually watch how to do the ocean sound, okay? Now what I care about in the, for this purpose, okay, is how to put more tension in here is to go from the ocean sound to the second phase, which is bringing the note up and activating all the muscles. So we're gonna go from which is just before the note. So, and this might be a little bit technical, but it's really useful, check it out. Can you see how I go from a really deep air sound into a more channeled, um, high-pitched sound? Like this, check it out.
right? We go we have this right? And that's what you want. Um, so if you're finding yourself that your facial muscles are not doing enough, okay? Doing this thing alone, phase one to phase two will actually help a lot because it will remind, I would say your body, not only your facial muscles, but also down here, your, your abs and your diaphragm to push more air. So we're done. Check out my free webinar if you want to. There's more tips on, on ocean sound and more secrets about how to practice more efficiently. And subscribe. I don't know. Actually, you know, I'm not going to ask you to subscribe. YouTube is full of people asking you, subscribe here, subscribe here, and the little bell. No, I'm not going to ask you to do that. Do whatever you want. Cool. See you. Bye. And to finish off, let me ask you the question of the day. What is the thing that drives you crazy, ambusher-wise, sound-wise? What is the thing that you struggle with the most? Let me know here below in the comments and I'll see you there. Okay, cool.